Japan has started the process of converting two helicopter carriers into an aircraft carrier to operate F-35B fighter jets, while South Korea has officially started its LPX-2 light aircraft carrier program that will operate short takeoff and vertical landing fighter jets, and the French president has also officially green-lighted the construction of a new nuclear-powered aircraft carrier to replace its existing carrier by 2038. The Indian Navy chief had said repeatedly that third carrier is an operational necessity, and experts have also stated that a Chinese carrier strike group in the Indian Ocean region will soon become a reality, as the Chinese base in Djibouti is now ready to base a large aircraft carrier. The UK government has announced that the Royal Navy's largest carrier battle group including HMS Queen Elizabeth will arrive in India in September for joint exercises with India and Japan, and the Indian Navy will have the opportunity to analyze the carrier design and capabilities, which has already been offered by the UK. Irrespective of the design that India chooses for its third carrier, it is to be noted that 75% of the material and equipment on board INS Vikrant is completely indigenous, and 85% of the total project cost has went back into the economy. India now has unprecedented access to US technology for the construction, including the electromagnetic catapult launch system, that will enable it to launch and recover heavy strike aircraft and early warning aircraft like the E-2 Hawkeye. The French firm Thales has signed a contract with Lockheed Martin as a Tier 1 supplier for the delivery of 55 airborne anti-submarine low-frequency dipping sonar systems, that will be installed on the MH-60 anti-submarine helicopters of Greece, India and Denmark. The airborne low-frequency sonar system offers a long-range detection over a wide area, and is capable of detecting classifying and tracking of enemy submarines in both deep and coastal waters. It has multi-frequency capability, that also enables the system to adapt its performance to varying environmental conditions. National Aerospace Laboratories has issued fresh tenders for design consultancy on the development of automatic flight control system and flight director systems for the SARAS Mark II program. The Department of Scientific and Industrial Research has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Hindustan Aeronautics, and the Transport Aircraft Division of Hindustan Aeronautics which manufactures the Dornier 228 will be producing the Saras Mark II. The Indian Air Force has committed to procure 15 aircraft, and they will cost 30% less than the 19-seater variant of Dornier 228. The navies of India and France have concluded the three-day Varuna 2021 joint naval exercise in the Western Arabian Sea, that involved a variety of drills including advanced air defense and anti-submarine exercises, fixed-wing and rotary-wing flying operations as well as tactical maneuvers. The two naval forces also participated in anti-air and anti-surface weapons testing, underway replenishment and other maritime security operations. The Indian Space Research Organization has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Ares Research Institute of Observational Sciences, to prepare a talented group of solar scientists, that will use the scientific information which can emerge from the upcoming Adit UL-1 mission in mid-2022. Under the program, seven payloads of instruments will be launched using the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, that will be used to establish a space-based observatory to study the Sun, and will also carry out round-the-clock imaging. India has already developed the algorithm that is required to track the fast accelerating coronal mass ejections emerging from the interiors of the Sun. Oh, Mark, drop it.